A couple weeks back, I broke down the resume that got me into Fang as a data scientist. Now in this video, I said I would also show you guys the resume that got me my Amazon and Goldman Sachs internships as a software engineer. As a software engineer? Yeah, as a software engineer. Many of you guys may already know my backstory of how I interviewed for software engineering and asked to ultimately work in data science because nobody would interview me for data science. If not, check out the video in the descriptions below. Now, let's take a trip down memory lane and jump into roasting my resume. Okay, so this is my resume. I am not proud of it, but I've had worse resumes. Let us not go into that. At least this one is one page long. Okay, first off is structure. It's all right, things are clean enough, although it has a lot of white space, but let me point out the issues here. It's coded in LaTeX. So this is a very popular LaTeX template with a two color name. Um, I guess I really wanted to show that I did know how to code. Are you impressed? <laughs> this is not only very overdone, like I said, very popular template, but it's also extremely not ATS friendly. Literally, this is the source code. It's incredibly hard to parse for poor ATS. Next up, education. It's all right again. I did my undergrad in pharmacology and then now I'm doing my master's in computer science. Eh, kind of makes sense. Clearly I couldn't get a job with a pharmacology degree. I do want to point out that I list a bunch of these scholarships. Nobody knows what they mean. Um, so in my next resume, I fixed it up much better and actually listed out what they were for. Work experience. So here is my job as a research assistant at a computational biology slash bioinformatics lab for cancer research. I discovered cancer mutations and used Python and R. All right, the recruiter probably said, she knows how to code, kind of. I think I did the best I could to make this entry as codey and software engineering as possible. The publications are cool though, although I think they would have looked more impressive if I was applying for medical school than for big tech and finance. Next entry is data science research volunteer, where I worked in another bioinformatics lab, this time trying to create a database for this model plant. It was pretty cool because plants are pretty cool and don't bite you. I also worked at a bunch of animal labs where I was bit by a variety of different animals. Also, I didn't feel terrible because doing research with animals really made me feel pretty bad about myself. Anyways, next up is project and leadership. Team Steady Hands. We thought this was a pretty cool name, this was a hackathon where we hacked a myoband, which is a band that uses sensors to detect movements in your arm and hand. We wanted to use it to detect tremors. So the idea was that we would allow, um, we would use this myoband to cancel out the tremors so it allows people with Parkinson's to have steady hands. We didn't win anything, but it was really fun working on this project with a couple of friends. And I still think this is a pretty cool idea. Founder and business lead at my startup. I go into more detail about this in my other video, but long story short, this was my failed startup. We tried to develop an app to help students with autism and ADHD achieve their goals in schools. The idea is solid, but our implementation was not so solid, mostly because I had no idea how to lead a business and was simply too immature, TBH. Team Drug Me. Drug Me? I honestly have no idea how we came up with this name, um, but this is another hackathon where we digitize the clinical decision support man mechanism. Manual? Mechanism. I don't know. CDSM. But this is basically this big book that clinicians use to diagnose patients. And we wanted to make it smarter and digital and using natural language processing. It was built with JavaScript, um, with Firebase and React, and the natural language toolkit in Python and LTK. So, I didn't actually do any of this because I didn't know how to code. But I had awesome teammates that did it and I just kind of hung around and ate junk food and cheered them on throughout the entire two nights. President of Tech Explore. This is a cool university club that teaches students tech skills. I really enjoyed this experience organizing workshops and hackathons and eventually became president. My skill section was a little bit sparse. And for some reason, I thought Simona would care that I could use LaTeX. And let's be real, I didn't actually know how to use LaTeX. But I guess I tried my best to make my skill section as filled out as possible with what little I knew. Looking back now, this resume is super science heavy, which makes sense because of my science background. But I do give myself credit for making a solid effort in transforming the little experience that I had into a resume fit for a software engineering internship. And despite it all, it did get me internship offers from both Amazon and Goldman Sachs. So some recruiter probably was like, hmm, this person is trying very hard. Maybe we can groom her into a respectable software engineer. Just 
Just kidding. She decided software engineering was not her thing and went to data science. Oops. In any case, what I hope you guys take away from here is that despite how hard I roasted my resume, it still get me my two internship offers and some more interviews. So don't be discouraged if your resume isn't great now and your experience is not plentiful. You can always improve. And if you haven't already, do check out the video on my resume that got me into Fang as a data scientist, which I think is much, much better. See you guys in the next video.